we now have all the puzzle pieces required to create our custom subassembly. I'll start this design with point P1 and leave everything defaulted because it's going to be the insertion point of my subassembly. My next point will be P2 and L1. And the delta X that I'm going to use for this, the way I'm going to position this, is utilizing the input parameter, which is my right width, that I created in an earlier module. I'm going to enter that. You have to enter it exactly as it was created. I'm going to enter it as right width. My delta Y is going to be zero. I'm going to give the link name uh, a name of top. And you'll see that I immediately get a warning message saying that top is not valid. And basically what that means is I forgot to enclose it in quotation marks. The width utilized by L1 here uh, is the default that we put in for right width, which is 0 0.4. But we can change that uh, when we're creating our assembly. I'm next going to create an auxiliary point. An auxiliary point is a point that doesn't show up in your subassembly when you're creating your assembly, but it's used as a geometric placeholder to create other points. Uh, this is going to be at the radius point for our uh, little curved nose here on our median, and it's going to have a delta y of negative 0.1 and a delta x of 0. So from that auxiliary point, I'm going to create P3 which is going to be the bottom of that radius. And then I'm going to go ahead and create P4. P4 is going to be my edge of travel way. It's going to be the bottom of my median. I'll give that code, uh, that point, an ETW point code. And I'll continue to link these, uh, give these link codes the name of top, because I'll be using that code to create a surface later on. You'll see I have my two tangents created, so I can go in now and use advanced geometry to create a curve, and that's where my auxiliary point will come in. This is going to be an arc general. It asks me for a start point, a center point, and an end point. Your center point is the radius point, or the auxiliary point that I created. So I will go in and set those. I set my first one to P2, my second one to P3, and then my auxiliary point as AP1. And you'll see that the curve is created a little incorrectly. That's not how we want it to look. So let's switch the order of our start and end point, and you'll see there that that cleans things up nicely. Note that this is not a true curve. This is a tessellated curve, uh, the way that it's currently set up by default in SubAssembly Composer is that that curve will be separated into eight different chord segments. Of course, the more chord segments, the more closely the curve is approximated. I'm going to go back and now create point P5. Uh, P5 is going to start from our original P1. We're creating the left-hand side of our median now. And the delta X is going to be left width, which is one of our input parameters. But we're going to make sure we put the negative sign in front of that so that it draws that point to the left of the assembly uh, point. Again, I'm going to continue with the top codes for our links. And just like with the right-hand side, I'm going to create the same auxiliary point geometry for the left-hand side. This is a 0 0.1 uh, meter radius, and we're just going right, left, up, and down for this. So there's no, uh, no weird delta x's and delta y's. It's just a negative 
0 0.1 for the delta y. Now for our P6, which is the bottom of the little curved area, uh, we will want to set that as a delta x of negative 0.1 because it has to go again to the left. We're going to continue along with the very same process. We're going to create P7, which is the bottom of our median. That will give us our two tangents. And we'll go in the same way and create the curve as we did on the right side. We have all of our points selected there to define our curve. And the only thing that's left is to put a bottom on this. And for the bottom, we're just going to drag a simple link in. And for a link, all we have to do is give it a code, of course, and basically connect it between two points. So I'm going to connect it between these two, uh, P4 and P7. And that's going to stretch based on the location of P4 and P7, which, of course, are going to vary based off of the input parameter. Now, we are pretty much finished. All we have to do is add a shape to wrap this up. I'll drag a shape in here and give that shape a code. Again, shapes are used to create uh, uh cross sections and quantities. We're going to call it median. And I'm going to select the select shape in preview. And if I click inside the close shape, you'll see that it highlights and it will select all of my links for me in that shape definition. I could go in and type them in in order, uh, but it's much easier just to pick that in closed shape. Let's go ahead and save this. Give it a name because we'll need it later when we import it into Civil 3D. And that concludes the creation of our custom subassembly. Now we'll move into Civil 3D, import it, and start using it.